What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. In this video, I'm going to do another drywall penetration test. And the cartridge that I'm going to be testing is the 10 millimeter auto. And the firearm I'm going to be using in this test is my Glock 20 Gen 4. It has a 4.6 inch barrel and it's 100% stock. I did not do any customization to it yet so this is a standard factory Glock 20 Gen 4 with the 4.6 inch barrel and the drywall I'm going to be using is just some standard half inch drywall residential grade this is the drywall that you use for interior walls of a residential home and it's probably the drywall that you have on your walls and if you haven't watched any of my drywall penetration tests yet, I highly recommend you go and check them out. I'll leave a link up above at the top of this video to my drywall penetration tests playlist where I have all of my drywall penetration tests. I've done 12 gauge so far. I've done 300 wind mag, 308, 44 magnum, 500 magnum, and I plan to do a variety of other different cartridges so check out my drywall penetration tests playlist that has all of my drywall penetration tests and the way I set up the drywall is I have a jig that I made from 2x4s and the jig holds the drywall pieces together very tightly and I cut the drywall to one foot by one foot squares and so the jig just holds them all together tightly. They're not spaced out. They're packed together tightly. And I'm going to be shooting at the drywall from a distance of about 5 to 10 yards. And I'm going to be using a variety of different ammunition. We're going to be using bear loads. We're going to be using full metal jacket. We're going to be using some jacketed hollow points. And we're also going to be using the extreme hunter bullets. So for the bear loads, we're going to be using some Buffalo Bore Dangerous Game Heavy 10 millimeter 190 grain mono metal with an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second and a muzzle energy of 607 foot pounds. We're going to be using some Buffalo Bore Heavy 10 millimeter Outdoorsman 220 grain hard cast flat nose with an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second and a muzzle energy of 703 foot-pounds. We're also going to be using the Underwood Ammo 220 grain hard cast flat nose with an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second. For the full metal jacket, we're going to be using some PMC Bronze 200 grain full metal jacket with an advertised velocity of 1,050 feet per second. And for the hollow point, we're going to be using an Underwood Ammo 200 grain jacketed hollow point with an advertised velocity of 1,250 feet per second. And finally, we're going to be using the Extreme Hunter from Underwood Ammo, and this is a 150 grain bullet traveling at 1425 feet per second and it's very similar to the Underwood Extreme Penetrator bullet which is actually made by Lehigh Defense and the purpose of this test is to see more or less how many walls a 10 millimeter auto can penetrate through and obviously just shooting at sheetrock is not going to give us a full picture of how many walls a 10 millimeter can penetrate through because inside of a residential home you have different objects that the bullet could strike like furniture or appliances also you have insulation inside of the walls you have electrical cables and conduits and piping so this is kind of just to give us a general idea of how many walls a 10 millimeter can penetrate through and we're going to also compare the results of this test to the results of other tests that I've done with other handgun and rifle cartridges 
So sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for your support. All right guys, so first shot is gonna be with the PMC 200 grain full metal jacket with an advertised velocity of 1,050 feet per second. And we're gonna be using my Glock 20 Gen 4. Let's see what happens. All right guys, so now we're gonna hit it with the Underwood Ammo 200 grain jacketed hollow point with an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second. And we're gonna use my Glock 20 Gen 4. All right guys, so now we're gonna hit it with the Underwood Ammo 150 grain Extreme Hunter with an advertised velocity of 1,425 feet per second. We're gonna use my Glock 20 Gen 4. Let's see what happens. Alright guys, so now we're going to hit it with some bear loads. First up is going to be Buffalo Boar 190 grain mono metal. This is a dangerous game load advertised by Buffalo Boar as being for dangerous game and bear defense. It has an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second and we're going to be shooting it out of my Glock 20 Gen 4.
Alright guys, so now we're going to finish up with some hard cast bear loads. First up is the Buffalo Boar 220 grain hard cast with an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second. And we're going to be shooting it out of my Glock 20 Gen 4. Let's see what happens here. Alright guys, so now we're going to finish up with the Underwood 220 grain hard cast traveling at 1,200 feet per second as advertised by Underwood. And we're going to be shooting it out of my Glock 20 Gen 4. Let's see what happens here. All right, guys, so I want to share the results of the test with you. The Buffalo Boar 220 grain hard cast outdoorsman penetrated through 32 sheets. The Underwood 200 grain jacketed hollow point penetrated through 30 sheets. The Underwood 220 grain hard cast bear load penetrated through 29 sheets. The Buffalo Boar 190 grain Dangerous Game Mono Metal penetrated through 27 sheets. The PMC Bronze Full Metal Jacket 200 grain penetrated through 18 sheets. And the Underwood 150 grain Extreme Hunter penetrated through 17 sheets. So the results of the 10 millimeter are very similar to the results of the 44 Magnum. The 44 Magnum Underwood Ammo 305 grain hard cast bear load penetrated through 32 sheets when I did that test. And that's exactly the same amount of penetration as the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast 10 millimeter. And the Underwood 245 grain full metal jacket 44 Magnum penetrated through 28 sheets. And that's very similar to the 10 millimeter Buffalo Bore 190 grain mono metal. And the Underwood 44 Special 200 grain gold dot hollow point penetrated through 17 sheets, which is the same amount of penetration as the 10 millimeter Underwood Ammo 150 grain Extreme Hunter and the PMC Bronze 200 grain full metal jacket. What's interesting is that the 44 Magnum full metal jacket penetrated eight more sheets 
than the 10 millimeter full metal jacket. And what's also interesting is that the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum with the 300 grain flex tip and the 500 grain XTP penetrated around the same as the 10 millimeter, even though they're traveling at a much higher velocity. But because those loads travel at a higher velocity, the 500 Magnum bullets were able to expand a little bit. But the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum penetrated through 40 sheets with the Buffalo Bore 440 grain hardcast. So not a huge difference in penetration in drywall between the 44 Magnum and the 10 millimeter, and not even a huge difference between the 500 Magnum and the 10 millimeter. So now I wanna compare the results of the 10 millimeter test with the results of a 12 gauge test that I did. And you can see here that the three inch, one ounce Winchester Super X rifled slug penetrated through 17 sheets so that's a lot of penetration 17 sheets of sheetrock but the 10 millimeter with hard cast bullets penetrated double what the 12 gauge one ounce slug penetrated so pretty interesting and you can see that the two and three quarter inch number seven and a half bird shot only penetrated through two sheets so you can see that the 10 millimeter has significantly more penetration than the 12 gauge. Same thing with the 44 Magnum and the 500 Magnum. Now moving on to the rifles, the 300 Win Mag is the deepest penetrating cartridge I've tested in drywall so far. And with the choice ammunition, 180 grain cutting edge solids, those penetrated 88 sheets and the Hornady Superformance 180 grain SST penetrated only 23 sheets. So the 10 millimeter can actually out penetrate a 300 Win Mag with soft points. That's pretty interesting. And the reason why is the 300 Win Mag is traveling at two to three times the velocity of the 10 millimeter this hornady superformance 180 grain sst has a velocity of around 3000 feet per second so this sst bullet expands very rapidly when it hits things at that kind of velocity and if you want to check that test out i'll leave a link at the top of this video and you can check that test out and then the 308 Winchester or 762 by 51 millimeter NATO with the PMC X-TAC 147 grain FMJ or M80 ball. It penetrated through 45 sheets. And the Federal Fusion 150 grain bonded soft points penetrated through 25 sheets. So you can see, guys, that the myth that hollow points and handgun rounds don't penetrate very well through drywall and through interior walls is just bogus also this is why there's no such thing as cover inside of your home you watch a lot of these tactical channels on youtube where you have all these so-called experts showing you how to clear rooms inside of your house and there's really no such thing as cover inside of a residential house all right even a wooden door won't stop a slug or a nine millimeter or any of these cartridges let alone sheetrock so think about that and consider that in your home defense plans because there is no such thing as cover inside of a house a residential stick frame house drywall and plywood are just not good at stopping bullets okay the only cover inside of a residential house might be your refrigerator and heavy furniture like a couch or a bookshelf things like that maybe an oak desk but Walls are not going to really stop bullets, so keep that in mind.
All right, guys, welcome back to the New York Prepper Top Secret Ballistics Analysis Lab in rural Pennsylvania, a.k.a. my garage. And I want to go through every single sheet of sheetrock with you guys so you can see exactly what these different loads did to the sheetrock. So here we have the first sheet. On the upper left, we have the Buffalo Bore 190 grain mono metal, and that's a bear defense or dangerous game defense load. It's a solid copper projectile. On the upper right, we have the Underwood 150 grain Extreme Hunter, which is very similar to their Extreme Penetrators. On the right center, we have the Underwood 220 grain Hardcast Bear Load. On the lower right, we have the Underwood 200 grain Jacketed Hollow Point, which is an anti-personnel load. On the lower left, we have the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast barrel load. And then left center, we have the PMC Bronze 200 grain full metal jacket. So we're going to go through all these sheets together. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you guys the bullets up close so you can see what they look like after penetrating through all the sheetrock. And then I'm going to take some measurements of the bullets to see if they expanded and if they did, how much they expanded. And then we're going to weigh them to see what kind of weight retention they got. So this is the first sheet. As you can see, they all penetrated the first sheet. And this hole in the middle, you can disregard that. That's from my 12-gauge Brennick Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug Test. And if you haven't seen that one yet, I highly recommend you check it out. And I'll leave a link up above for that video. Here is sheet number two. Okay, they all penetrated sheet two. And you can see that Extreme Hunter has that X shape here. Okay, because if you've ever seen the nose of those Extreme Hunter bullets, they have that classic x shape okay just like the extreme penetrators from lehigh defense and if you guys are not familiar with lehigh defense they're actually a pennsylvania company so just wanted to uh let you guys know that makes me proud to be a pennsylvanian sheet number three here's sheet number four you can see that x shape there from the extreme hunter Sheet number five, sheet number six, sheet number seven, sheet number eight, sheet number nine, sheet number ten. Sheet number 11, sheet number 12, they're still all penetrating, sheet number 12, sheet number 13, sheet number 14, sheet number 15, you can see that Extreme Hunter starting to leave a huge hole in that sheet rock look at that guys massive hole there could fit my whole index finger in there actually could fit my thumb in there too it's a pretty big hole look at that that's what these extreme hunters are supposed to do they're supposed to be like a combination of a solid and a hollow point together it's a pretty interesting design here is sheet number 16 Huge hole here from the Extreme Hunter. You can see some of these other loads are starting to make pretty big holes in the sheetrock. Here is sheet number 17. And there's where the Extreme Hunter got stuck. Okay, it penetrated the 17th sheet. And it got stuck in the 18th sheet. Okay. Here's the 18th sheet. You could see it dented the 18th sheet, but it did not pass through. 
kind of left a little bit of like a bump on the back, but it did not pass through the 18th sheet. So 17 sheets of half inch drywall. That's how much the 10 millimeter underwood ammo, 150 grain extreme hunter penetrated through. And here we have the PMC bronze 200 grain full metal jacket. And this one penetrated through 18 and got stuck in the 19th sheet. And here's the 19th sheet. And you can see it got stuck in there, but it did not quite penetrate. It kind of poked through the paper a little bit. You can see it poked through the paper just a little bit right there. Okay. And uh, that's what it looks like. Okay. Here's sheet number 20. You can see actually a dent here in the 20th sheet from that PMC bronze 200 grain full metal jacket. Here's the 21st sheet. 22nd sheet. 23rd sheet. 24th sheet. 25th sheet, 26th sheet, and here we have the 27th sheet and the Buffalo Bore 190 grain mono metal dangerous game load penetrated through the 27th sheet and got stuck in the 28th sheet. All the other ones are still going, okay? So here's the 28th sheet right here. You can see it left a pretty big hole in the 28th sheet, but it did not pass through, okay? And then the other three still going, the Underwood Jacketed Hollow Point and the Buffalo Bore and Underwood Hardcast Bear Loads still going through. Here we have the... 29th sheet and the Underwood 220 grain hard cast bear load penetrated through the 29th sheet and got stuck in the 30th sheet. Okay. And here's the 30th sheet. You can see big dent in the 30th sheet there. Look at that big hole and nothing on the back. Okay. And the Underwood. 200 grain jacketed hollow point penetrated the 30th sheet and it got stuck in the 31st sheet. And the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast bear load is still going. All right. So and I'll just show you what the exit hole looks like on that 200 grain jacketed hollow point from Underwood. And there's the exit hole in the 30th sheet from the Buffalo Bore 220 grain bear load. Here's the 31st sheet, okay, and you can see big dent here from that 200 grain jacketed hollow point. Little bit of a bulge out the back, okay, of the 31st sheet, but didn't penetrate through, all right. Here we have the... 32nd sheet and the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast bear load penetrated the 32nd sheet and got stuck in the 33rd sheet and it poked through the paper just a little bit. You can see the little hole under there, okay? Kind of poked through the paper just a little bit of in the 33rd sheet and it left very small mark in the 34th sheet so this is our deepest penetrating 10 millimeter load in sheetrock out of my glock 20 gen 4 with the 4.6 inch barrel 32 sheets of half inch standard residential grade drywall with the buffalo bore 220 grain hard cast bear load with an advertised velocity of 1,200 feet per second 
Guys, that is just an absolutely insane amount of penetration. 32 sheets of sheetrock. I mean, do the math. One wall has two sheets of sheetrock, so that's like 16 walls. And the jacketed hollow point from Underwood penetrated through 30 sheets, which is still a lot. Okay, even the hollow point penetrated through 30 sheets. And a lot of you guys are probably going to be wondering why. If you haven't watched my other sheetrock tests, you can look at the top of your screen, at the top of this video, and there'll be links to my other sheetrock tests. But, but if you're new to sheetrock tests, you may not understand why a jacketed hollow point would penetrate the same depth, basically, as a hard cast. The hard cast bear load only penetrated two more sheets than the jacketed hollow point. And the reason why is that drywall or sheetrock is, is very dry. And it's very difficult for projectiles to expand unless they're either very soft or they're traveling at very high velocities. So for a projectile to really expand properly inside of something like drywall, you need a really thin jacket, especially at the nose area. And you need a good hollow point, a good size hollow point, And you need relatively high velocity. Now this 200 grain jacketed hollow point has an advertised velocity of 1200 feet per second, which is basically the same speed as the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast. So they're both traveling at the same speed or same velocity. Velocity is a better word than speed. So that's why they were able to both penetrate the same amount roughly because this jacketed hollow point here is not soft enough and it's not traveling at a high enough velocity to expand inside of the drywall because drywall is dry. It doesn't have any moisture. It's a very soft material. You can, you can break drywall rel relatively easily. Okay, you can even scratch it and it comes apart. It's not like sand or anything. It's not a very dense material. It's, it's light. So that's why you have to keep this in mind because a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm going to get hollow points for self-defense and I'm going to get hollow points for home defense and concealed carry so I don't have to worry about over-penetrating through walls. And as you see, that's not the case, okay? This... 10 millimeter jacketed hollow point penetrated 30 sheets of sheetrock. Okay, so keep that in mind if you're going to be using your handgun for home defense. People have this idea that you know handguns don't penetrate a lot through sheetrock, but all the testing I've done with this round and 44 Magnum. They can penetrate a lot of sheets of sheetrock, okay? So just keep that in the back of your mind and plan accordingly. So I'm going to show you guys what these bullets look like up close now. Then we're going to weigh them to see what kind of weight retention they have. And we're going to take some measurements. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So let's look at these bullets. And I'm going to clean these up and we'll take a closer look after I clean them up. But I wanted to show you what they look like after pulling them out of the sheetrock. So this is the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast bear load. This one penetrated the deepest. You could see it lost its gas check. Okay. And I couldn't find the gas check, but there's the base of the bullet. You can see it pretty much retained its shape, a lot of uh, powder stuck to it, a lot of uh, drywall powder, the nose is still intact. Here is the Underwood 220 grain hard cast bear load, but the nose is still pretty much intact. It still has its Teflon coating on the nose actually, that red color, that's a Teflon coating which is supposed to reduce fouling and lead vapors and stuff and smoke so nice looking bullet though pretty much retained its mass it looks like 
Here's the Buffalo Bore 190 grain mono metal. All right, that's what it looks like. Nose is still intact. Here's the PMC 200 grain full metal jacket. Nose is still intact on this one. All right, there's the base there. You can see the lead. This is a full metal jacket bullet. No major signs of deformation here. Pretty much intact. Here's the Extreme Hunter from Lehigh Defense, and it's loaded by Underwood Ammo. This is a 150 grain projectile. All right, you can see that nose there. It has that X shape, okay? And those sharp cutouts on the nose, which help with uh, hydrostatic shock and tissue displacement. But as you can see, it's pretty much intact. And then here's the jacketed hollow point you can see a lot of sheetrock powder stuck in the nose but pretty much no deformation hardly any deformation at all in this jacketed hollow point very interesting so i'm going to clean these up now we're going to take a closer look we're going to do some measurements and we're going to measure the weight and see how much weight they retain so stay tuned all right guys all right, guys, so we're not going to take any measurements because these bullets didn't expand at all. So I'm just going to measure the weight and see what kind of weight retention they have. And I want to just show you guys up close again what they look like here after cleaning them up. These are the two hard cast bullets. On the left is the Buffalo Bore 220 grain hard cast, which penetrated the deepest through 32 sheets of sheetrock. And on the right is the Underwood Ammo 220 grain hard cast. And both of them are supposed to actually travel at the same velocity, around 1,200 feet per second. I have to do some chrono tests with these to uh, see if the advertised velocity is actually true and compare the velocities on these two loads. But you can see the Teflon coating on the Underwood is uh, still intact it's still on the bullet you can see the nose kind of deformed just a little bit here you can see on the edge of the meat plat here a little bit of material got removed and but you can see some scratch marks on the outside but for the most part retained its shape so those are the hard cast bullets here's the 200 grain jacketed hollow point and you could see it had zero expansion no expansion whatsoever okay look at this bullet it's perfectly intact okay so this is why you have to be very careful when you're selecting your home defense ammo and remember your ammo is just one aspect of the equation you have to set up fields of fire in your home be aware of what's around your home and where your family is inside of your home because this thing penetrated through 30 sheets of sheetrock and it's a jacketed hollow point. And you can actually see here that a lot of the sheetrock powder is still inside of the nose, but no expansion whatsoever. The petals are still intact. Look at that guys. Here we have the full metal jacket from PMC. This is the PMC bronze, and you can see it's pretty much perfectly intact. All right, no deformation whatsoever. There's the base, all right. Beautiful looking bullet here. Here we have the 150 grain Extreme Hunter from Underwood Ammo, and this is actually a Lehigh Defense Bullet, which is a Pennsylvania company. So show love for Pennsylvania and stock up on some Lehigh Defense Bullets, but looks pretty much 100% intact, okay? And then finally, we have the Buffalo Bore 190 grain mono metal. And what's interesting is when you look at these bullets, 
that rifling is not really as prominent, okay? The rifling marks on the bullet are not as prominent as with other handguns. And the reason why is because Glocks have the polygon rifling. And the polygon rifling is a little bit smoother. It doesn't have sharp edges, which is supposed to help with cleaning and longevity. So you can see the rifling marks are not as prominent. You can see one rifling mark there but it's not like a sharp cut, okay, like traditional rifling, all right? But this mono metal is still intact. Very nice bullet. So let's weigh these bullets and see what kind of weight retention they got. All right, guys, so I've zeroed my scale. And just to check if it's zeroed, I got my 100 gram weight over here. And we're going to put the 100 gram weight and double check, you see 100.00. So we know that we're zeroed out here. So we'll switch back to grains. We're gonna start with the Buffalo Bore, 220 grain hard cast. We got 211 grains out of 220. So that's 95% weight retention. And I think that nine grains that it lost is pretty much just this little thing here this uh gas check or whatever you want to call it looks like it lost that gas check a little bit here's the underwood 220 grain hard cast you got 212 grains out of 220 so it only lost eight grains so that's also about 95 or 96 percent weight retention here we have the underwood 200 grain jacketed hollow point 200.2 grains and that point two is probably just that little bit of sheetrock dust that's stuck in the nose but pretty much a hundred percent weight retention here's the pmc bronze 200 grain full metal jacket 199.5 grains, so basically 99.9% .9 weight retention. Here's the 150 grain Extreme Hunter. And that's 150.2 grains, so basically 100% weight retention. And then finally, the Buffalo Bore 190 grain Mono Metal. And that one's 190.5 grains, so 100% weight retention. So pretty much all these bullets retained 100% of their weight after penetrating through all that sheetrock, with the exception of the hard cast bullets, which lost 9 grains. And I think those 9 grains are literally just this gas check that they have, okay? Like on this underwood here, you can see that there was some kind of material here and uh, it lost that material. But so that's pretty much where those nine grains came from. So that's pretty much it for this test. Let me know what other kinds of tests you want me to do with the 10 millimeter and what other kinds of drywall tests you want me to do. But that's all I got for now. So take care. God bless. And don't forget the three P's, prepare, practice, and persevere.